and welcome to season three of NSC Get Started in the Market. I'm Manvi Dillon. On the show today, we're going to go behind the scenes and figure out how a stock exchange works. And we're going to start right here at the National Stock Exchange. The Indian stock market is one of the oldest stock markets in Asia. Dating back to nearly the 18th century, the time when the British still ruled India, and the East India Company transacted in loan securities. In those days, trading on corporate stocks and shares in bank and cotton presses took place in Bombay. Over time, what started as informal trading by a group of brokers from under a banyan tree formulated into more organized stock exchanges, expanding to over 20 regional stock exchanges across India. But the most defining moment in the Indian financial markets came in 1994 with the setting up of NSC, the National Stock Exchange, the first fully automated screen-based trading system with a reach across India. It has a network of more than 200,000 NSC terminals across 600 districts through more than 34,000 NSC member branches. NSC is one of the largest exchanges globally today. But how do you, the investor, participate in this huge network? And what happens when you trade on the National Stock Exchange? The NSC is a fully computerized exchange and offers an online trading system, which means members are connected from their respective offices at various locations to the main system at the NSC premises through a high-speed satellite telecommunication network. So what really happens when you click on the buy or sell button? The exchange uses a trading system which is an order-driven automated matching system. It does not reveal the identities of parties to an order or a trade, which means nobody's buy or sell order is driven by their identity. But how is the buy or sell price of the share determined? At any point of time, there may be many buyers and sellers of the same stock in the market. For example, you might decide to buy 10 Reliance shares for 900 rupees. And at the same time, two anonymous sellers decide to sell 5 Reliance shares each for 900 rupees. The computer system will automatically match your buy order with the two sell orders to complete the transaction. This order matching happens on a price time priority. Hence, when there are more buyers for a stock in the market, then the stock price tends to move up. And when there are more sellers, then the price will move down. But what happens if there are no sellers for the share that you want to buy? If your order does not find a match, it remains in the system and is displayed to the whole market till a fresh order which matches comes in or the earlier order is cancelled or modified, but your transaction is not yet complete. The shares that you buy will not immediately reflect in your DMAT account as the NSC follows a rolling settlement on the T plus 2 basis, which basically means if you place an order on Monday, transaction day, it will get settled by Wednesday, that's two days later. So if you buy a thousand shares of a company at a hundred rupees per share on Monday, you will have to give a total amount of one lakh rupees to your broker latest by Tuesday and the broker in turn has to give this money to the stock exchange by the third day which is by Wednesday to complete the transaction and for the stocks to reflect in your DMAT account. Now that we've understood how a stock exchange works, what is a stock exchange mindful of? What are the risks it hopes to contain? Let's find out. Joining me on the show today is J. Ravi Chandran. Group President, National Stock Exchange of India Limited. Thank you very much for joining us on Get Started in the Market. I want to ask you one broad question at the outset. Conceptually speaking, what are the types of risks that a stock exchange must address, that it must be mindful of? See, the first and foremost which comes to my mind is the settlement risk. What it means actually is that uh, if an investor sells shares, he should be able to get his money. And if he is buying shares, he should be able to uh, uh, get his shares. 
and what happens in the marketplace is since it's a, such a large complex place that if there is a default by a member it will have a cascading effect so what i mean by cascading effect is that that if somebody has to give something to somebody and he defaults and that person back to back will have some other obligation he is going to default as well so this is number one risk and number settlement risk settlement number two risk. Number two risk is of course the technology risk because today's uh, stock exchanges run on complex technology and uh, so the technology has to be very robust and when the investor and it, it happens at a very 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 uh, high speed. So what actually happens is that, that you need to keep the technology very robust and uh, up and running all the time. This is the second uh, risk. And the third, of course, is the marketplace related risk in the sense that uh, the broker has to be uh, kind of financially sound and uh, he should have clean uh, practices and records and uh, at the same time, you know, we also will have to guard against the possible manipulation and the like. So this is the third. The fourth, of course, is uh, what uh, I would call as price risk. This is that uh, the market may go on, uh, up and down and the uh, market is quite vol could be volatile. And it's not always that the investor will stand to only gain. You know, this is the fourth risk which I would so, place. Uh, and correct me if I've got it wrong, but you know, the first three risks are risks that the NSC can address. The fourth, yeah. which is yeah. a price risk, yeah. really is, it comes with the territory, doesn't it? Yeah, that's basically because, you know, ultimately these investments are subject to market risk, as you know, where people would have heard many times uh, on the television. And uh, naturally, you know, this is a risk which will have to be addressed differently and it's impossible for anyone to guarantee that the market will only go up or the price will only go up, you know. Absolutely. Is, uh, yeah. I want to talk about how you manage the risk. What are the measures that you have in place? And the first, the starting point would be the measures in place for, you know, managing the settlement risk. Uh, walk us through the NSC approach. Yeah. So what we have uh, done and of course uh, uh, SEBI or regulator for the stock exchanges has uh, put in place a lot of rules and uh, 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 circulars and by which uh, the, the rules of the game are uh, the same for all stock exchanges. The exchanges have uh, another legal entity called the clearing corporation which are invariably the subsidiary of the exchanges and the clearing corporation is the one which actually guarantees the settlement of trades. So how it guarantees the settlement is that uh, it has a margining mechanism in the sense that the uh, trades before they take place there is something called advanced margin which will have to be paid to the clearing corporation depending upon various uh, parameters which has been set in by SEBI and uh, also we have also created a settlement guarantee fund uh, which is robust enough and SEBI has also last year come out with uh, a requirement of core settlement guarantee fund which is really very robust and which gives a lot of comfort to the marketplace that if something goes wrong, if a member becomes a defaulter, the clearing corporation will be able to uh, fulfill its, its obligation of guaranteeing the uh, default risk, basically. Okay, I just want to expand on that just a little bit, which is, you know, what is a settlement guarantee fund? What is a core settlement guarantee fund in terms that any layperson who's watching can easily absorb? Yeah. See, any uh, company, for example, if you take an insurance company, so insurance company ultimately used to pay if there is a disaster. And how the insurance companies actually pay, because they have their network, they have their reserves, and you know, they have created uh, fund order, depending upon the, their regulators' uh, requirement on this. And similarly, uh, the settlement guarantees fund is one which we had under our bylaws, declaring corporations bylaws, which actually uh, was created by the accumulation of uh, deposits and other uh, monies which have been the margin monies and all of various brokers. The core settlement guarantee is one where so we have now come out that the exchanges will have to contribute, clearing corporations will have to contribute and um, th the contribution is actually you know has to be in certain forms and invested in certain forms and the like and it is uh, quite substantial as of today Okay. and which gives a lot of comfort to the investors that okay if a broker becomes a defaulter he will still be we will still be able to honor the obligation for somebody who's watching who's diffident about the stock markets intimidated by the stock market what's a thought that you will share as we conclude this conversation that will inspire confidence 
Yeah, see, uh, ultimately today if you look at any types of investment, so the investment has to cover, the return from the investment has to cover inflation and he should also get a decent return more and above the tax and the inflation. So world over now time and again in different countries including India it has been proved ultimately equity investment will give the best return which is going to cover the tax as well as the, uh, uh, the inflation. So uh, uh, if you look at from that point of view then in investment in equities is the best. And of course this is not bought from a shop or a mall or uh, on the, in an online uh, 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 site like Amazon or Flipkart but this is brought from the exchanges which are highly regulated by SEBI and exchanges in turn regulate the, uh, the in brokers basically. So what happens, this is a safe place and we also ensure that technology is safe, settlement is safe and the like. But at the same time as I said earlier, the price, is, price risk is one which you know, we cannot uh, guard against, the investors will have to guard against by themselves. At the same time, we would, I would also say that the investors also will have to exercise caution. We keep doing a lot of awareness programs, investor awareness program all over the country. Uh, every year there is 1,500-2,000 programs are held under the auspices of SEBI as well as the exchanges including NSE. And those programs uh, they should attend, they should learn about their rights and obligations and which is very important. For example, if I say that, uh, we send the trade uh, confirmation every every uh, evening or next day and then if they if they have traded they don't get the confirmation they they should take it up with so the they should be mindful mindful of that of what you know they are at, due to receive at the same time they have received a confirmation which they have not traded they should immediately take it up because somebody else's trade would have come into that account which is also not good so this is uh, very important you know well i'm going to take the liberty of saying that investors have to take some of the responsibility as well they have to make the investment of understanding yes. what is there to protect them thank you so much for talking to us today thank you thank you thank you get started in the market we'll be back after a quick break so keep watching welcome back you're watching nsc get started in the market what makes a stock exchange tick what makes a stock exchange efficient and safe? Well, let's seek some answers. NSC's risk management arm is called the National Securities Clearing Corporation Limited or NSCCL. The main objectives of NSCCL are ensuring that the obligations of trading members are in line with what they can actually afford. It ensures capital adequacy requirements are maintained it continuously monitors members and their trades and last but not the least ensures strict margin requirements are maintained. Joining me now is T. Venkatrao, Managing Director of NSCCL, that's the National Securities Clearing Corporation Limited. Mr. Rao, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. You know, for our viewers first, just a quick brief introduction to what NSCCL is and does? NSCCL, National Securities Clearing Corporation of India Limited, performs clearing, settlement and risk management services across all segments that are traded on National Stock Exchange of India Limited. Okay. And it is the first clearing corporation established in the country which offer settlement guarantee for the first time in the country. And also, it is the first CC which was rated triple A and has been getting triple A corporate rating by Crisil since last eight years. Okay, let's take a step back. I'm going to ask you a broader question. Is it fair to say that margins are at the heart of a risk management system for a stock exchange? Absolutely right. It is very fair to say that margin system is the heart of risk management. The margin system seeks to identify, seeks to address the day-to-day -day uncertainties that are encountered by the stock market. Okay. Which that may have impact of risk impact. So the, 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 it ensures, the margin system ensures that all participants in the market completes their obligations 
in spite of even in the wake of that uncertainty period another thing margining system along with the the the, the collateral management system they form the crux of risk management system so every member will be margined up front so they have to keep sufficient collaterals with nsccl with clearing corporation so there are two things to keep in mind it's the margin management it's the collateral management they come together they form the basis of the risk management system yeah, right. now when we say you know margin system it seems like an easy uh, phrase but i'm sure there are many aspects to the margin system and i want you you know to explain to us some of the key features of the margin system yeah for the margining system there are two basic aspects for this the one is volatility <coughs> and the other one is liquidity we capture the historical price moment the fluctuations of the price moment and try to capture what could be the highest highest uh, 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 movement of the price stock of the price okay suppose the stock var margin is 7.5% mm. it means we can 99% surely we can say that the price of the stock will not move beyond 70 7.5% on the next day okay so the second point is the, we will take the consideration of the liquidity of the particular stock we will actually combine the volatility or the wear of the volatility and the uh, the liquidity of the security so by combining these two aspects will help us to identify the potential loss the participant the broker is exposed to and the broker is supposed to bring that margin to cover this potential loss so in a sense you know you're covering the outer ends of the risk and you're capturing it by taking into account the volatility and the liquidity of a stock in sort of simple terms now in the futures and options segment what happens uh, the future and option segment actually the risk management there is called the portfolio method the risk management actually calculates the potential loss the entire portfolio potentially post to the broker and uh, that would be actually covered as much the potential loss of that particular portfolio per day from today to next day that will be calculated and it will be collected as much so you know the margin you is taken be okay and i wanted to ask you that uh, what is nsccl span yeah the span is actually developed by cme that is chicago mercantile exchange okay. and the licensed by nsccl the, the main object of the span margin the, the span system is that it will it will determine the highest loss of that entire portfolio of a particular participant or a broker for a one day range from today to next for that it calculates the margin based on the parameters provided by the nsccl well i'm going to leave it at that uh, mr ra thank you very much for joining us on the show today thank you thank, thank you nice we'll be back next week with another edition of get started in the market so do join us but till next week then goodbye